Hey everyone, Patrick Dunn here again from Minicore Chef Services, here to talk to you today about choosing cutting boards. You've bought your knives, you've uh, made the decision to get some good quality knives, now you need to treat them right and get the proper cutting boards to slice and dice and uh, make cooking, you know, a positive experience and a pleasurable experience. So let's talk about a few of those, shall we? So like I said, we've got a couple here, I've got my... Uh, my stack of cutting boards here, okay, that I've collected over the last year or so. And uh, so we've got a few sizes, got some smaller ones here, at least I consider these small. And then I've got a couple that are a little bit bigger, alrighty. Uh, the size of your cutting board is going to be determined by your counter space. If you're a single person living in a 500 square foot condo, you're probably not going to have a lot of room for a big cutting board. So you need to think about your, uh, your space, your habits with cooking. Do you need something big or just something really, really small? Alrighty. Also, keep in mind, something that you can put in a dishwasher or in your sink. Having a big, giant cutting board that doesn't fit in either one of those um, probably isn't the best idea. Chances are you're not going to be able to wash it as thoroughly, and uh, that's where the bacteria spreads and that's where the potential uh, foodborne illnesses can occur. So things like that you want to keep in mind. Um, like I said, these are the ones made uh, with recycled paper or recycled wood made by a company called Epicurean. Okay? I'm not sponsored by them, just a fan. And um, like I said, they mix this up in a big slurry, pour them in a big press, and this is what pops out. Really, really great. Has the uh, washable properties of plastic, but it has kind of the feel and uh, the antibacterial properties of wood. So you're getting the best of both worlds on these ones. They're light, they're cheap, they come in all different types of sizes and themes and have all different bells and whistles. I seem to like ones that have little, you know, holes on them so you can hang these up if you need to. Um, they're great. So I really recommend those. Um, a couple that I'm sort of getting away from are plastic. I've had this guy for some time. Okay, it's, uh, been a workhorse for me in the past. But you can also see, well maybe you can see, maybe you can't see, but um, you can see some little dots in there and you can actually see uh, where I've cut and you can see they've kind of darkened. That's actually food that's in there, okay? I don't use this one anymore, but I keep around to show people just the difference. Uh, the concern with plastic cutting boards is, especially when you have sharp knives, the sharp knife cuts a lot deeper into plastic than say some sort of uh, hardwood or um, uh, like the Epicureans that I just showed you. It cuts further deep in, the, fur the food can go deeper and the concern is scrubbing it down or washing it doesn't always get into those deep crevasses. Okay? And again, that's where the bacteria can sort of uh, build up and that's where you can get sick. So there is a lot of chefs are moving away from this type. Um, as long as you can keep it clean or if you put it in the dishwasher, your dishwasher gets to a really nice high temperature, the chances of the bacteria going are, far, uh, are greatly diminished already. So use your own judgment, use your own decision. There really are no right and wrong answers here, um, but I'm just giving you some options. Um, having said that, I've got this big, this is my biggest cutting board. This is a uh, plastic cutting board as well. The reason I like this one is that usually, uh, use this to clean fish on, to uh, take the skin off giant uh, fillets, and it's just because of the sheer size, it works really, really well for that, and I'm always really conscious that I wash it and scrub it really thoroughly afterwards. So there's actually, for me, there's actually not a lot of direct cutting happening on uh, this big plastic cutting board, so that concern of the bacteria going deep into crevasses isn't a huge issue for me, but again, I like it just because of the size, and I can do you know big roasts, or I can do big fish or, you know, I can take apart a whole chicken on here and uh, it just works really, really well. So, that's plastic. And my last one, this guy doesn't get moved around much. This is my big baby. Big, huge cutting block made from larch wood. I've had this probably about five or six years now since I started my business. And uh, he doesn't get moved around much just because he's so heavy, but he's great. Um, this, stays on my counter pretty much the whole time and um, if I'm using 
for cutting up raw protein, I'll take one of my other cutting boards and I'll just lay it right on top of my big block like this. That way I don't have to try and wash this big honking thing. I just have to wash this guy. It works a lot better that way. Uh, large wood, of course, is a, uh, considered a, a hard wood, um, but not so hard that its density will dull your blades. So when, um, uh, when people are making cutting boards, they, they go for that fine balance of, of firmness of the wood, but not so firm that it's going to dull chef's knives. And so that's what large wood provides. Uh, one of the reasons I really like this, it has a little rubber feet on the bottom, so it stays in one place, doesn't move around. It's really, really great. And as you can see, or maybe you can't see, um, since I don't push this in the dishwasher or anything, you can imagine putting this in the dishwasher, there's no cracks forming anywhere along the side. And, uh, you know, I'm probably going to have this board probably for the rest of my life. Um, it's a huge investment, but uh, it's just really, really worth it when you, when you make your living uh, cooking for people and uh, you're using it every day. It's really a wonderful, wonderful piece. If you have any questions, please email me, patrick at intercourse.ca. Uh, check out my website, inter-course.ca. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Intercourse Chef, uh, where I have many other videos uh, that you can uh, check out. Or you can check out uh, my articles and my, uh, my stories on my blog, bubblingtowardssuccess.com. Thanks for tuning in today. If you have any questions, let me know. Cheers.